All right. Um, so we're going to get started here. And uh, today I have a live webinar for you that's going to go through how to optimize your decking and fencing website for conversions. Um, and I'm really excited to share this information with you. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in it that you can apply to um, your fencing or decking website. Um, and it's really just meant to provide a lot of value and be able to take things away from this. Uh, really just uh, get yourself in a better position against your competitors. Um, but let's get into it. All right. So what we will cover today, uh, first will be the 10 critical elements that will enhance your website conversions. So basically anything related to converting the people that do end up on your website um, and converting them into a customer instead of just a somebody that sees the website, you know, we won't actually turn them into a customer. So once we get past that, we're going to say, we're going to show you where to place your number, your phone number on your website for desktop and mobile and the power of social proof, um, meaning reviews, and also show you how to attract the exact type of customer that you're looking for um, and be able to close them. So we're going to find what types of customers you know are the ideal ones to bring in the ideal type of lead that you want to close um, and then we'll actually show you some ways um, that'll make it much easier uh, to actually close them so who am i uh, my name is alex danner and i have actually been in the digital marketing space for about 10 years and uh, started my first agency a while back that i was doing a lot of uh, work for home service clients and i decided that i wanted to focus just on fencing and decking, um, primarily because I was getting good results for existing clients. You know, the customers that I was working with were getting a lot of new leads and I was really working out well for them. And I was able to 2X up to 5X their uh, size of their business. So depending on their goals, you know, how much they want uh, to grow, how many new crews they want, things like that. Um, but that's, you know, something that can be accomplished with digital marketing. And I'll get into that more. But I would say another very big reason why I wanted to work with fencing and decking companies is because I actually have a big farm um, up in Pennsylvania in the Allegheny Mountains, uh, pretty treacherous <laughs> uh, hills to climb. And we have 500 acres and 300 of that is high fence uh, deer fence. So eight foot tall fence and three strands above that, you know, is uh, 10 to 12 feet. And just <laughs> putting that uh, fence together and putting in each one of those posts, it was just grueling work and had just a ton of respect for um, people that do that every day. And just really got along well with the uh, fencing and decking company owners that I did know. So um, that's, oh, and not to mention barbed wire around the full 500. So just a lot of, a lot of hard work. So I commend uh, anybody that does that line of work. But enough about me, just want to talk about the actual company a little bit. So we only work with fencing and decking companies. Basically all day long, my team and I, that's what we're working on is getting more leads for our fencing and decking clients. And um, that's what we like to do. You know, we like to work with our clients. We like to understand their goals. We don't um, do any kind of marketing without making it very clear exactly what our clients are looking for. It is fencing and decking, but there are, I know it's very common for other services to be offered by um, businesses that do fencing and decking. So if there's any kind of like outdoor structures, you know, pergolas, um, arbors, um, any kind of hardscaping, things like that. Um, it's very common to combine with fencing and decking. Uh, so we do work with those kinds of companies, but um, you know, the main service is being fencing and decking. So uh, just a little background of the company there. All right, so I wanted to talk about the three principles of omnipresence and that marketing system. If you wanna be omnipresent, that basically means you wanna be everywhere, um, not just one marketing platform, not just Google, but being seen everywhere on social media too. So this whole system here is very powerful to be um, in more than one location. And I'm gonna explain that and basically go through the main three principles to that. Uh, the first one being, you gotta maximize the opportunities. So you really need to make sure a lot of people are finding your business. So they're finding your website, they're finding you on Google, finding your social media, and they're reaching out to um, schedule a call book an appointment and get you out there to help them with their fencing or decking needs. Uh, so you wanna make sure as many opportunities are out there as possible. The next one is gonna be maximize your brand impressions. So aside from Google, like I was saying, social media, so Facebook, if you have an Instagram page, uh, showing off all those great jobs that you've completed, putting that online so people can see it. Um, you wanna make sure that 
whatever they decide to use to find what they're looking for. Some people might be on Facebook and they see uh, a Facebook ad or they see your Facebook page, no matter where they are or what they choose to use, you want to make sure that you can, uh, they can find you. And um, the more places you are, the better off you're going to be. Um, also things like email marketing. So if you're sending out emails, kind of giving updates or maybe promotions, things like that, that's another way. Um, and you can do text as well. That's uh, another thing. Okay. So once you have more people coming in, you know, your brand is out there, people can find it. You want to maximize the conversions. So you want to make sure that enough people are converting from, you know, traffic to the website into actual leads. And today that's what we're going to really talk about. We're going to really narrow down exactly what the website should look like and uh, just your online presence to actually get those conversions, get more people coming to you. So what are the different problems basically with marketing? You know, there's a lot um, people come across, especially if they've had bad experiences in the past. So I just want to go through those, um, some of the bigger ones, with the first being it's a big investment. So it's going to cost a lot of money to have a marketing, uh, to in, you know, implement marketing, and especially depending on the type of marketing you're doing. But, um, you know, fencing your decking companies, pretty average is five to 10% uh, to invest in um, their annual gross revenue in marketing. So if you have a $1 million business, you know, that's going to be 50000 to $100,000 a year. You know, if you have a $10 million business, that's going to be 500000 to uh, $1 million per year. But no matter what size the business, you know, it doesn't really matter because it's all relative. Um, the thought of putting money into something that you're, you know, maybe not for sure it's going to get the return you're looking for uh, can be, you know, a little bit scary. Another problem you can definitely have is you're getting traffic to your website, but you're not getting the actual leads. So you look at something like Google Analytics and you're saying, wow, a thousand people came to my website or but I only got you know, two or three leads. So what's going on? I don't understand. That is a very, very common problem. And um, a lot of times it's just the person who's on the website is not completely sold. Um, and I'll show you some reasons later in the presentation that'll you know, clear that up a little bit, but um, also just a low, a low return on investment. So you're getting the traffic, you're not getting leads. Without those leads, it, you're not getting a good return. So you gotta make sure that whatever you're paying in marketing, you're making more than that. You're getting enough business that's paying for that marketing and then some. Um, and when it's done right, that's absolutely going to be the case. And the fourth one here is not generating enough leads for the investment and you're not able to grow. So basically the leads aren't coming in and they're not enough to keep up with the pace. So for example, say you need X number of leads to keep four crews busy. Um, those leads aren't coming in. You want to grow the business but more than anything, you wanna make sure those crews are at least busy. So you gotta have a very confident hold that the amount of leads coming in every month is consistent. It's not like you're just holding out for word of mouth and hoping somebody calls you or this or that. With the right digital marketing strategy, you know, you can count on that a lot more. The biggest thing is gonna be having a great website that's gonna be able to convert people. Um, so there's really two main purposes that a website should be built for. Um, and the first purpose is going to be SEO or search engine optimization. And uh, basically that's everything to do with Google, you know, ranking high on Google when people look for your services. Uh, so if somebody's looking for, you know, in this case, an aluminum fence, um, they can type into Google aluminum fence and you'll be at the number one spot. That's the goal, right? So if you have your website specifically planned out to have the right content, on the website so Google can actually understand the pages and rank you, that's where SEO is really gonna thrive. But you know, if you're not actually ranking there, you're not really gonna have any kind of conversion problem, of course, because nobody's gonna find the website to begin with. So you gotta make sure you at least get those people to the website having the great content, which I'll go over in a second, um, and then be able to convert them. But the next piece to that is you gotta convert them from visitors into callers and leads. Somebody comes to the website, they're looking for a fence, a deck, you know, they want a specific type of fence. They don't know what they want. They just want somebody to help them. You got to turn them into an actual lead or a customer. You know, that's the end goal, not just to get somebody to find the website. It's great to have them on your site looking around, but if they're looking around and not taking any action or they can't figure out how to contact you, that's going to be a very big problem. So having just that balance 
uh, is really what you need. You got to make sure all things are working together, uh, all parts of your website, so you can get more more business. In the end, when everything's properly working, you know what does success look like? You know, you got to have the phones ringing, of course. So you got to have people actually answering the calls um, as well. So uh, calls are coming in or website form submissions, you know, where you want people finding uh, or reaching out after they see your website. And then you want to have your salespeople closing. So you got to make sure that the amount of new customers coming in, you can actually handle. You have somebody that can go out and reach these, give estimates on these jobs without taking too much time. You know, a lot of people want things done pretty quick. So uh, that's really going to be important. And then your crews are busy. So depending on how many crews you have, you want to make sure that they're busy. And then if you wanted to have more, you want to make sure that their uh, new ones are busy and you have a uh, structured plan that will allow enough work to come in for those new crews. But um, at the end, we just want business to be booming. You know, we want everything to be working perfectly together, enough people that can handle the work that's coming in without everyone being too... Uh, too much burden on just one person or one um, part of your company and everything's just going, you know, calls are coming in, leads are coming in. You have somebody to answer the phone. You have the salespeople to go inspect the properties and then you have uh, the actual crews to handle the work. So uh, that's, that's what um, best case scenario, of course. So your website is going to be the main hub for all your marketing. So no matter what kind of digital marketing you do, your website's gonna be the endpoint more than likely for everybody. So the different types of marketing that would be affected or that would eventually lead to your, to your website, a uh, big one of course is SEO. You know, if somebody's on Google, your website's listed as a link there. So of course they're gonna end up on your website. Um, but some of the lesser known ones that uh, some people might not think about, you know, social media, it's great to have a good presence on social media, uh, posting good things and impressing people. But, um, you know, people might be looking at these posts and saying, oh, they're great, they're nice, this and that. But eventually they're going to, when they actually do need that service, they're going to say, all right, let's check out the, the website. I want to know what the team is like. I want to see past, uh, past work, things like that, and really just try to gain a trust from the business um, before they move forward. A way the website even, I guess, uh, customers will end, on the web, end up on the website is also even something as simple as door knocking. So... If you have somebody knocking on doors to try and close more deals, um, maybe you're handing out some kind of uh, material, paper material, pamphlets, things like that. You know, it's uh, more than likely going to have your business name. Well, of course it is. And either have a website on there or if not, they're going to type that into Google, find you and make sure it's legitimate. It's not, you know, if somebody wants, uh, somebody's going to want a, a reputable company and they're going to use their website to be their first way to determine that especially if they don't know anybody that's never used you. So eventually they're going to be at your website and you got to make sure that thing just looks perfect, explains exactly what you do and um, gives them reassurance you can do the job right. But in the end, um, I'm going to show you some very, well, not in the end, coming up soon, I'm going to explain you some specific things we can do for the website. All right, so just to kind of give you some numbers of like why conversion rate is so important. So you have... 500 visitors, both scenarios. Um, one website has got a 5% conversion rate, which is going to be 25 calls or leads. Say you close about 30% uh, of those jobs and seven of them actually close. You get the money from them. You complete the job. $2,500 average profit. That's going to be 17500 However, in scenario two, where the website is optimized, your online presence is optimized. You're going to have the same 500 visitors call it 15% conversion, which could even be low. You know, if everything's done perfectly, uh, it's a good chance it'll be higher, but conservative number there. 75% will actually turn into calls or leads. You know, your sales guide closes 30%. That's going to be 22 jobs every month. So 2,500 average profit, that's going to be 55,000. So you're basically tripling, <clears throat> tripling, a little bit over tripling the uh, leads and revenue and uh, making more money. And that's really just because of optimizing your online presence and your website, because so many people use that as a way to really trust if they can use a certain business. Okay. So I like to give an example. Um, this is a client that's Evergreen Fence and Deck, and they had a website that was built a long time ago and really just wasn't all that flattering. You know, it was built a long time ago. 
Um, a lot of a lot of issues with it. You can see a picture was broken. Just a, a bunch of things working against it. And what they wanted to do was build a website that would represent their brand, have good content, but more than anything, they wanted to get more business. Um, you know, this was an established business, 25 years in, uh, been in, been around for 25 years, and they were using sites like Angie's List and Home Advisor to get leads, and just weren't happy with it because they give those leads to multiple people. They wanted for a new solution and wanted to be seen on Google and build their brand that way. We kind of explained is you can be the clear choice on Google and you don't have to fight against everybody else if you're you know, clearly that best choice there. So got fed up with the old site and decided to use us. And we basically built that brand new website you can see there. The whole idea is to build something that people will want to stay, understand the content, resonate with, see the pictures of products that look similar to the ones they want, see great reviews, um, things like that. I'm going to go into the specifics in a, in a little bit. They're actually seeing a very, very big uptick in jobs and uh, very consistent, you know, a lot, lot more consistent um, than they were doing previously. And things are just rolling right along and they're very happy with it. How do we optimize your website for conversion and lead flow? There's 10 critical elements that will enhance this uh, conversion for your website. Uh, the first one, you really got to get the basics. So there's always basics, um, things you want to do first that are easy. Uh, first ones, you got to have your phone number in the header. Um, also ensure that your contact forms are easy to access and you want to add some kind of credibility if you have it. So if you have an A plus in the Better Business Bureau, uh, Angie's List, things like that, people pay attention to it. Um, but a really important element that not many people pay attention to and what's been backed by um, studies by very big uh, digital marketing um, and website companies, they, it's a basically a Z pattern. So when people read a page, they start in the top left, they read across and they go down and they read across again. So that pattern there is how the eyes move. And there's basically these heat maps, um, software that'll track where people go and they actually confirm this. So taking that, uh, using that to your advantage is really good. Uh, you want to make sure the elements that you want to stick out you know, call to actions, call buttons, things like that are easily access, uh, easily readable and you can find them very easily. So another one, you got to have, as I was saying, clear calls to action. That should not just be, that should be throughout the page. So as you scroll down, it should be very easy to find the contact form or at least a call button. So they can click that, go to the contact page um, or click call. You know, if they're on mobile, they can do that too. Um, and you want to speak to your customer avatar, which I'll explain in a second but that's all about defining your perfect customer and special offers. So you wanna have special offers that uh, people will be attracted to and you know, think they're getting a really good deal kind of thing. Mobile optimized, crazy uh, how, how many people use phones these days. Uh, over 50% of all traffic is on mobile. So you gotta make sure you're using um, a mobile friendly website and then contact forms on, website, on your website pages. So number six is Another really good idea is to have an option to book online. So there's software that'll allow them to pick a time and book, book online. Um, you gotta define the fears and frustrations of your customer. So we'll go into those a little bit more specifically. And then having really um, authentic images. So not just stock images on the whole site. You wanna see pictures of your team, your past jobs, things like that. Video is huge now, as I'm sure most people know, that's only growing and uh, things like TikTok. People are using video all the time. And then social proofs. So you wanna have those reviews, basically all the people telling you what a great job you do. They should be using, um, or you should be using those reviews to your advantage on your website, uh, which I'll get into as well. The one element that will have the biggest impact um, on the results of your overall marketing efforts um, is gonna be how you optimize it for conversions. I'm sure you could have guessed that one. Um, it's all going to be all going to be about getting that phone call. I heard this quote not long ago. If you can see Joe Jones through Joe Jones's eyes, then you can see what Joe Jones buys. It's all about kind of that custom avatar and understanding what your customer wants. You want to use language on the website that really resonates with them. So understanding what their fears are, their worries, you know, what they're looking for, the best case scenarios. Once you understand that, that can be represented through the copy. So as they read through, they're like, okay, these guys get me. And that's basically the end goal and what we're looking for the most. So I apologize for the blurry picture. This is 
kind of layout of a customer avatar. So the first ones, you're gonna have your pains and frustrations, um, your fears or your goals and desires, your fears and implications, your dreams and aspirations. This is all about everything related to your customer. You wanna make sure this is defined and I'll explain in a second and give you an example, but this is all about developing that language that resonates with your customer. Who is your ideal customer avatar? As I'm sure you may be thinking, there's probably a lot of them. So depending on the service that you offer, the type of fence even, you know, if you're going from a vinyl or a wood fence, it could be two completely different, um, two completely different avatars. So it's best to kind of take some time to really understand exactly what their situation is, you know, where they're from, kind of how they think, you know, they're family oriented, things like that. Um, so that way, when it comes time to sell to them, write their cop, write the copy on the website, you know, it's almost like we're talking to somebody we already know. Um, so demographics, you know, this was just an example, of course, but uh, homeowner, you know, 35 plus years old, good enough age where they have hopefully saved up some money. Um, typically female, you know, the wife, good chance that they're um, calling, doing the calls, uh, not necessarily, but, um, you know, married with two to three kids, head of a household, um, at least 65,000 or more in, uh, annual, in uh, annual income. And family oriented, especially with fences, you know, they have kids, they have a dog, they want to fence them in, you know, those are going to want to keep everyone safe in there, in their house, in their yard, um, easily frustrated. So that if they want to just, they just don't have the patience to do it themselves. Some people might think they do. Um, that's going to be great to just pass it off to somebody else. Um, suburbs, a lot of times, and someone that takes interest in their community. So someone that actually cares and uh, is a good person. Also, so the, the pains and frustrations that they'll likely have coming into this. There's a good chance that they want things done pretty quickly. Uh, you know, everybody's kind of in a hurry these days. So getting somebody out that can take care of the fence, maybe it fell or it's falling onto a neighbor's property, whatever, or they just want to have their new fence so they can release their dog out there. You know, they just want to get things done and they could be worried about how much it costs. So that could be one of their, um, their pains, just wondering if they can afford it. Um, or maybe even their neighbor's dog is constantly using the bathroom, their lawn as a bathroom. So they're just coming onto the property and they want to say, you know, no more. And then we'll talk about fears and implications. So nobody wants to be ripped off or overcharged. And they're going into, you know, if they're building a fence, pricey uh, endeavor, they're going to want to make sure they can afford it and they're not going to get overcharged. And pick the right person. So they, they don't know, you know, they, there's a good chance they don't know any fencing companies and they're just going from based off what they see Google. So making them feel good um, and comfortable is going to be, you know, in your best interest, of course. And then, um, you know, nobody wants to have their home damaged or any kind of problems with that. Uh, you know, more so on the deck side, if, you know, they're extending a deck and mess up the, uh, uh, the actual structure of the house, things like that and nobody wants to wait. They're afraid they're gonna to have to wait too long or just not good communication with the company. You know, they wanna have their answers or their questions answered and um, good communication throughout. Also, their goals and desires. So a lot of these are typical, you know, more income, money, wealth, drive a nice car, luxurious home, um, but specifically fence and deck, you know, they wanna, like we were saying, have their dogs and kids, they can play outside. You can let them go out and play and not worry about them wandering off, things like that. The dog doesn't run away and they just want this stuff behind them so they can, you know, enjoy their pleasant time with their family and spend more time with them. Now we're going to be a little bit more in the nitty gritty of what exactly they're going to be putting on the website. So these are just kind of uh, some examples, but things that work really well. Uh, an estimate in 24 hours. So that's, you know, probably pretty quick, but, um, you know, basic case scenario, somebody calls and they said, hey, within 24 hours, we can reach out um, and actually inspect your property and give you a, an estimate then. Um, if you put that on the website, that's going to make people think for sure they're going to want to pick you over somebody else because they can get their uh, problem fixed quicker. Also affordable um, financing options. So if some people can't pay cash for it and they want to finance it. So they'll, you put something on there saying, uh, you know, it's, we're available to finance your, your um, new fence or deck, you know, they're going to feel a little bit more comfortable versus the competitor that doesn't even mention that. And they could potentially have to pay out of pocket. Um, trustworthy and experienced team. So 
that kind of comes back to putting good content around the website related to your employees, your crew, the, the executives, anybody on the team, um, you know, just depending on the size, but they want to know that the people that are actually working on it are somebody they can trust. Uh, lifetime warranties, so anything that you might offer or even the actual materials too, uh, very important. And local to the area. So a lot of people want to work with a company that's nearby, you know, somebody that they know where they work out of. And it's not like a storm damage company that just starts putting out ads when there's a bad storm and they have no idea where they're actually from. You know, everyone likes to know that they're taken care of by somebody that is from the area and adds, you know, trust to that as well. This is an example of just how you can speak to your ideal customer on the website. So first thing it says, you know, we are an elite local fencing company serving Maryland and adjacent areas. Uh, get more specific than that probably too. Um, you know, set, specify the exact cities that you offer. I'm not going to say every single city, but you can mention um, counties and different areas that uh, group cities together. Um, you know, people want to see that you're course, experienced, you're licensed, you're insured professionals, uh, you have the best in industry warranties. So people are worried about that. They know they're taken care of. Um, no money down would be a huge one. So if people don't have to pay out of pocket in the beginning. Um, and also, you know, zero interest financing options, because who wants to pay interest? All these little things are nice sales points and kind of answer those little doubts in people's heads that you don't really know about. You know, there's a lot of potential doubts. So if you do your best to cover all of them on the website, that's going to be a lot more likely you get the call over a competitor. Another thing, um, having video is going to be very uh, advantageous to your website too. Uh, I mentioned this a little bit in the beginning, but um, people really are using video more and more. The big rise of TikTok has a big thing, a big uh, reason for that. But you know, we kind of went from text communication with Facebook and Twitter. And then with Instagram, we're on photos all the time. And then once we did TikTok, you know, it's full blown uh, video. Snapchat's mostly video too. Um, and then these other platforms are adding video like Instagram as well. But a crazy statistic um, TikTok said the average consumption per day for a user is 54 minutes. And they're just using those short videos. So understanding that just shows you where kind of the world's going and how much video is being used. So if you have a video, it really does add a lot of trust, um, especially going into 2022. Okay, so this one, I guess, is probably a little bit more well-known, but you need to make sure you have a lot of reviews. So you're asking for Google reviews, and then you're actually putting those reviews on the website. No matter where they are on the site, it's good to have it on each page um, and kind of have each website page be a individual uh, sales person or sales tool. So you want to make sure you grab those, grab those reviews and um, put them on the website and make them clear. And um, of course, get your five-star reviews. If you have a customer that was just a huge pain or, you know, there's endless horror stories of customers that uh, left a bad review and barely or didn't even use you. Um, there's ways to hide those and just show the five-star reviews. There's lots of tools to do that along with tools to actually get more reviews too. Okay. So if you can, um, it's a really good idea to add some kind of special offers to your website pages. So you could say this for say, you know, maybe you're running a special on vinyl or wood fence, something like that. And they're on that page. You know, if you say there's a limited time discount for vinyl fence, maybe it's a spring special. Um, you can say you buy this, you get 10%, you know, maybe not 10%, but some percentage off, some dollar value off. Uh, that's going to make them more likely to use you too. Um, it's not like you have to, you know, get too detailed on um, how much the sale is, but just knowing that they make something or um, get a little bit of a deal compared to your competitors is going to be very helpful. And free add-ons, so, you know, maybe they get cheaper cost on the gate if they install a full fence, something like that. Uh, anything that will help you convert them. So you need to make sure your site's mobile friendly. Um, Right now, 54.5% of internet traffic is mobile. I think last time I checked, it was 52. So that should just keep going up. So you need to make sure not only is it mobile friendly, but everything works properly and everything's optimized. Uh, you have the right call to actions on mobile too. They can click to call, things like that. Three out of five consumers search for local businesses on their smartphones. So most people are doing it. You know, If they need something, they need a local business, that's where they're going is Google. 
Um, also, if somebody has a bad experience, so maybe the website's very slow, it just it's just broken. Uh, they don't get what they need. You know, if they have a bad experience on the on the mobile version, they can very easily jump off that site and go to your competitors. And also, I think it's like seventy percent of people that do need some kind of service, you know, like fencing or decking. I think it's seventy or eighty percent actually use Google, so it's just hugely powerful. Okay, so click to call. You want to make sure that the phone number is in the header of the website, and they can click it call right there. So they get to the website, maybe they'll scroll, maybe they don't, they see the number, they click it, they give you the call, make it very easy on them versus having to search. You know, maybe they go to the very bottom of the page and they just see a number there, they try to click it and you can't. So they got to memorize it and swipe back and forth to enter that number. Yeah, nobody wants to do that. So it's very small, easy thing to do and it makes uh, conversions a lot better. Okay, so contact forms. They should be painfully easy to find. So the contact page should always be there, but um, you wanna make sure that it's on every page too. So uh, for example, this is the aluminum fencing page. You know, it's not the contact page, but you have the contact form there and they can fill it out. And it's good to have um, more information to get from them. You'll get better leads. Sometimes it can be a pain for them to fill out, but you wanna make sure you get that information and people aren't um, just putting anything in there. Um, kind of more tire kickers seem to do that. So people that take the time to fill it out, uh, really explain their project are gonna be better leads. Okay, so these are some key ideas. You wanna make sure, as we said, real authentic images of your team. So if you're going to the About Us page, the About Us page is actually the second most uh, viewed page of a website. I'll repeat that because it's important. About Us page is the second most viewed page on your website. So when somebody is looking you up and deciding if they want to work with you, they're going to click About Us and read about the owner, the crew, anything you have there. So if you have a bio and a, a unique picture of every person um, in the company, you know, dress nice, ideally, you know, just happy looking, um, you yeah, know, things like that. You want to make sure, or while they're working too, you know, in the middle of the job, um, have them on the About Us page and have uh, similar pictures of work being done across the website. Uh, the video we already talked about, the online reviews we talked about a little bit, but you wanna make sure that's on the homepage at least. Uh, you can add it to other pages as well. Uh, for example, if somebody's on, somebody's on the uh, aluminum fence page like I was showing you before, uh, they can click on that page and then scroll down and see the contact form, all the information about it and then also um, the uh, reviews as well to be sold on that. Okay, so I just want to show you the um, homepage of this. So we're, sorry, we're scrolling down, got a lot of nice images, and then you get down to the testimonials here. And then there's a separate page for all the testimonials too. So um, having those there is really important. You can see the Angie's List Super Service Award too. Uh, just a lot of little sales tactics, basically. Um, and that's what we kind of see here. You know, the phone number's in the header, uh, they have a web form and that Angie's list. The call to actions, you need to make sure they speak to your customer avatar and tell them exactly what to do next to. So be very clear that they fill out this form, then you get a call on uh, the next, you know, within 24 hours or hopefully less than that, give them a call that way and then leverage those offers. So any kind of offer you can put on the website is gonna be huge. Add a live chat is an option. Um, you gotta have somebody that's designated to respond to this, but some people don't wanna call. Uh, they can use the contact form or they can use a live chat where they talk to one of your representatives, ask you any questions and see uh, you know, how they move forward with um, this your services. And another one is they can book online. So this would kind of uh, avoid the need to respond to contact forms. You could just have them book an appointment while they're online that can automatically contact the customer and let them know when, you know, when they're actually gonna be coming out to view the property. If you would like to become you know, larger, life, larger than life uh, with your appearance online and become that best known fencer, uh, fencing company or decking company um, in your area, you know, absolutely reach out to us. You know, we'd love to speak with you and answer any questions you have. And you can just call us directly, you know, 410-261-4334. 
uh, or go to dense deck fence marketers.com and uh, reach out that way. But either one would be happy to speak with you. And I know we were just talking about website optimization, but um, touched on SEO, but I just want to show our core services, you know, to show exactly what we do. Um, website development's huge. You know, we fix up existing websites, we create new ones. Um, we do SEO, that's huge. Gotta, have, gotta be seen on Google. That gets a ton of leads and so does go, so, ah, so do Google ads. So if you have both of those running, you own Google's um, search results page and just, you know, dominate. And we, you know, we manage those, we set those up, we create the landing pages that they eventually come to. For SEO, we create all the copy for your website. You know, we write everything for you. We create blog posts. We do Google My Business posts um, and also social media management. So we will we'll, um, help with posting on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and make sure that engagement's there because it's really important to post on those platform on social media because you stay top of mind. So if somebody needs a fencing company, they follow you. They don't need one yet. You're posting good stuff. Uh, and then that time comes, they say, hey, I know somebody. So uh, reach out to you then. All right, um, that's all I have for today. Um, I will be putting out monthly free webinars, continue and continue with these. And basically they're just gonna provide value. You know, I'm gonna put stuff out there that I know gets good results and I've seen it work firsthand. And, um, you know, really just wanna help as many fencing decking companies you know, get more leads and crush it for, uh, for this year. So that's it. And if there's no more questions. Um, I'll sign off. Have a great day. Thank you.